Hello, this is Matt Plyle. Um, I just thought I'd give you a quick overview of some of the um, MEMS trends and markets um, and how great this industry is growing and why you should consider um, a career in microsystems technology. One of the best resources I found online is from the Yol Development Group. They study MEMS markets and they look at all the different devices made on the planet. So if you go to their home page, it's just www.yol.fr. FR stands for France. They're, they're based out of France. Um, and all they do is market research. So if you go ahead and look at their home page, you can find out a lot of different things. Um, they have a page of reports, which are very interesting. Um, uh, usually the, the report summaries have a lot of information in it. Um, and they sell their reports, which are usually several hundred pages long. But the summaries are great. You get a good feeling for what the markets are looking like. So for example, if you um, go to the home page and you click on uh, press releases, um, you can get the latest um, uh, growth rates and, and who's number one in the, on the planet in terms of making MEMS devices. So if you click on this chart here, it'll eventually bring you over to um, this illustration. And here you see the top um, 30 MEMS players um, from 2014 compared to 2013 sales. So this is the amount of money that they've generated through sales. Um, in the old days, it used to be between Texas Instruments and Hewlett Packard. Texas Instruments with the digital uh, mirror device chips, and Hewlett Packard with the um, primarily with the um, inkjet print heads. Those are two big uh, MEMS devices that have been around for, for a few years now. But more recently, Robert Bosch, um, which is a German company, has taken over the number one spot with over a billion in sales in 2013 and over 1.2 billion um, in 2014. Now, a lot of their products go into the Apple iPhones, and that's a huge, um, a huge consumer device with large sales, so Bosch makes several of the MEMS devices that go inside of the various um, Apple products, including tablets and phones. ST Microelectronics has a very broad portfolio, um, so they make MEMS devices for a wide range of sensing applications. Okay, Texas Instruments and Hewlett Packard we already talked about. Some other um, American companies in here that I can see off the top of my head is TriQuint. They make surface acoustic wave devices. It's, it's a type of sensor. You can see a huge growth in the last year with them. Invisense is a U.S. company. They make, um, I believe, gyros. Uh, Freescale Semiconductor has been around for a while, and they also make um, mostly inertial sensors for automotive applications. Analog Devices, again, uh, an American company also making inertial sensors, and they probably make a few other things I can't think of right now. And Honeywell, um, they make um, accelerometers for military applications and other applications. And an up-and-coming um, group is FLIR Systems. They make infrared cameras and infrared MEMS devices that can be mounted on um, different cameras such as um, iPhones and turn your iPhone into an infrared camera. Pretty cool device. So we have a little um, uh, few videos on that as well in this section. So you can see that um, the market is huge. The top five comprised of about one-third of the market. Um, but there's lots of small companies out there and there's several local companies in Albuquerque that are set to um, expand rapidly in the next couple of years. So you should be seeing something from HT Micro and possibly um, 3D Glass Solutions as well. Hopefully they'll make it in the top 30 eventually. Um, another really interesting uh, graphic from Yol is the MEMS market forecast in billions of dollars. So in 2014 we were up around uh, 13 billion dollars or so in the total market share. Remember Bosch was only 1 billion of that. Okay, So um, lots of small companies out there that 
produce custom parts for uh, a variety of applications. Um, biomedical is another big um, big market um, as well. So if we go through this, you can see um, if we go from bottom to top, you can read the blue, the lighter blue, the grayish blue, turquoise, etc. as you go up, and it matches the um, legend here. So we've got inkjet print heads. You know, they've been pretty flat. Um, I don't think those are going to increase much. People don't print out that much anymore because they can see everything on their phones and tablets. Pressure sensors is a huge market and it's it, it's still growing and that's used in a variety of applications from automotive uh, for fuel uh, balancing in your car um, to tire pressure sensors. Um, most of the new cars you can tell how much pressure is in your tires due to MEMS pressure sensors and then there's a lot of bio applications as well. Microphones is a, f a rapidly growing um, component used in cell phones for example and almost any tablet will now have microphones in them as well so you can record you know lectures or you can record meetings and take notes at the same time so microphones is a big application. Uh, accelerometers of course are, are big and th this is interesting because they've separated accelerometers from gyroscopes and from inertial combos. All three of these have to deal with measuring uh, motion. And they're used in cell phones, um, of course, gaming devices and interfaces. Gyroscopes is another inertial sensor. This is a slightly different um, technology, but it's also a MEMS device. So you could actually probably combine most of these into one group, one type of, of, of system. Um, then we have micro displays. Um, Texas Instruments is, is probably the biggest one in micro displays and projection systems out there. Um, the projection systems using the digital mirror device, they have them from huge cinema, digital cinemas. Most of the digital cinemas use um, Texas Instruments uh, digital mirror devices all the way down to Pico projectors which are about the size of a thumbnail that can go inside of a cell phone and be used as a projector and there's a really cool video about that in, um, in the imaging um, section of this unit um, and there's optical um, systems for example active gratings and things like that which fall into the other optical MEMS devices uh, microfluidics is a big thing and, and micro dispensers they, they could also be binned all together um, they're used not just in um, um, inkjet print heads because that uses microfluidics as well but also in um, dispensing medicine um, and aspirators and things like that you can control the exact size of the droplets which is important when you're doing drug delivery for example or trying to print out things very accurately on a on a printed surface so they're using uh, micro dispensers as well for 3d printing of foods and things like that uh, rf mems stands for radio frequency mems they, these are typically um, active antennas used in cell phones as one application and then there are oscillators um, mechanical oscillators um, based MEMS devices for um, doing bandpass um, filtration and things like that. Oscillators are also used in gyroscopic systems as well. And there's a bunch of other stuff. So you can see there's a huge variety of applications that MEMS uses. Most of them are for sensing systems, but we're getting more and more um, devices for actual um, actuating things. Uh, micro arrays um, for producing sound is starting to come out on the market for example and of course the display devices are all actuated systems so you can see you know things are growing and they're going to grow even faster as the time goes on because we're trying to connect everything to the internet so we're talking about something called the internet of things 
So, for example, you know your phone is connected to the internet, um, but now Fitbits are connected to the internet, and you know watches are connected to the internet, and tracking devices, um, so you can find your keys, are connected to the internet. So pretty soon everything will be connected to the internet. You'll be able to look up your your um, a refrigerator in the future online and see how it's um, operating and if it's still you know meeting the energy star um, requirements and uh, maybe the refrigerator will keep track of the foods you have in in your refrigerator and tell you what you need to go buy when you go to the store uh, thermostats are, are now connected not just to your home heating system but also to the internet so you can change um, the temperature that you want your house to be at when you come home from work so you know having the internet of things will require a lot more sensors and a lot more RF mems to connect to the internet um, so you'll start to see even more applications coming down the pike so lots of interesting stuff I hope you enjoyed this brief overview and I invite you to look at these um, these graphics which will be also embedded in this unit so if you have any questions you can always feel free and give me a call take care and um, enjoy